I've seen a lot of really shit soldering lately. So of like, uh, uh, like this shit or this. And it's really not that hard to get nice looking joints like these if you just get the right equipment and follow a few simple rules. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. And while I'm not a soldering expert or anything like this, I can get decent joints that hold up to band of flying like this. And that's really all you need for FPV, as long as you're not selling the drones or anything. So for the equipment, there's a couple of things that you're going to need. That is one, a temperature controlled soldering iron. You can use these uh, mobile ones, TS100. You can take it to the spot with you, but I actually prefer using a dedicated soldering station at home because it's just has the, the nice little stand as a brass sponge built into the base to quickly clean the tip. And it also has a bit more power so it heats up quicker. But one of these mobile ones is completely fine if you're on a budget and you want something that you can take with you to the spot. And for the tip, you should get this kind of size. Not the super pointy ones, not the super thick ones. But this kind of size. Then you're gonna need some side cutters, like these two cut wires and strip wires. And you're gonna need some tweezers. I like these angle tweezers to hold your cables. For very thick connections, I also like using these. For example, when I'm soldering a power lead, just get a bit nicer grip on these. Then you're going to need your solder and you should absolutely get leaded solder with a flux core. That means it has a flux built into the solder wire itself and flux is what makes your solder flow nicely and I think 0.8 millimeters is the perfect size for most FPV joints. And this stuff can be a bit hard to buy in some countries like the EU since it's kind of banned for uh, personal use. But you can usually find the, the TBS solder in some small shops. Then you're gonna need either one of these flux pens or flux paste. And you should probably just get both if you're starting out. And I'm gonna show you in a second why. And you're also going to need one of these uh, soldering mats, heat resistant. You can touch your soldering iron on here and nothing happens. You can drop solder balls. And you should get one of these solder suckers or solder pumps or whatever they're called. So I'm going to show you how these uh, work. So let's say you're soldering on your flight control or something. And you added a bit too much solder. And now you have two pads bridged. And what you can do is load this up, just heat the solder, press the button, and now it yanked off all the solder. And you could also use one of these, um, these thingies, but they are kind of hard to use and it's pretty easy to lift a pad if you are not careful. So I would just get the solder pump instead. And then if you want to use a uh, flux paste like this, it always leaves a little bit of residue. So let me... This is a bit excessive to show the effect. So using flux paste makes soldering very easy and you basically always get a nice joint, but it does leave a little bit of residue. So now there's some residue on here. And to get that off, you're gonna need some isopropyl alcohol. I have some in a little spray bottle. Just get some on there. And you can use a, a toothbrush and to uh, just clean that off. But once you get better at soldering, you don't really need this anymore because you can just uh, get away with using the flux that's inside the solder wire. But you cannot just have one chance at each solder joint using this integrated flux because if you heat it up for too long it evaporates. So yeah, if you're just starting out just get some flux paste and you have infinite tries. Yeah, 
And if you use this thing a couple of times, like I did just now, at some point it's gonna start clogging up and I can't load it anymore. And in that case, you're gonna need to unscrew this top. Be careful, there's a spring inside. And there's a bunch of solder in this thing. So what you can do is, like, like that, take some kind of uh, Allen key or something. And just uh, take something to it. Get it out. And you have uh, all this shit in here. Now it's good again. And since you probably don't have a bunch of broken electronics like me, you should just get one of these uh, practice boards. Honestly, just get uh, two or three of them. They're like three bucks each and just uh, use those for practice before going to actual hardware uh, where you risk pulling off a pad or frying the electronics. So to get a good solder joint, make sure your soldering iron is clean. So this one is a bit crusty right now. So give it a good twist in the brass sponge. And make sure the solder is sticking to it properly. And then add some solder to your pads. Make sure to heat the pad properly and then add the solder to the pad directly. Like that. Then tin up your wires, so I have them prepared here. Again, add the solder directly while heating up the wire. Then you can Add a little bit of flux to the pads. You can use this flux pen. It's a bit convenient. Then grab your wire very close to the end. So you have a, a nice grip. And heat up the pad and this uh, wire at the same time. That wire had a little bit too, too little solder on it actually. Let's try the next one. That's perfect. And the last one. So the causes that lead to a bad solder joint are one, if your soldering iron isn't clean and the solder is not sticking to it properly like this. And this happens if you are soldering at high temperatures a lot quicker than at low temperatures. So this is at 450 degrees right now and it's like going bad basically instantly. Just turn it down to 380. And it's going to last a lot longer. But it also makes the soldering a little bit harder, in my opinion. So number two reason why your solder joints are shit is if you hold your wire too far back, like this, 
and you try to hold it down with your soldering iron. So you kind of, let's say it's like this, it's hovering over the thing, I'm pressing it down, but as soon as I let go, the wire goes back up. Focus. So you get a shit joint like this. Another reason why your joints go bad is if you heat the pad or you just heat the solder in general for too long and that evaporates off all the flux and at some point it just stops flowing properly. So you see if I'm pulling up my soldering iron here, it creates this little tip. If there was still some flux in it, that wouldn't happen. So let's heat this up as well. And if I know I can I can try as hard as I want to make a good joint, it's just not gonna happen. Always gonna look a bit shit. Well, I mean it's it's on there, but it's definitely not as nice as the other ones. So previously I used this flux pen, which is like the light version of flux. It's a bit more convenient to use and doesn't leave residue. But it also doesn't work as well as proper flux paste. So to save this joint, I'm going to use a little bit of extra flux paste. Get it on there. Make sure my iron is clean properly. And then just heat up the pad. It will flow nicely. Now I have a properly clean joint. See, it's even better than the first ones. But it does also leave a little bit of residue, as you can see. And to clear that off, you're going to need some isopropyl alcohol, which I have in this little spray bottle. And a little uh, toothbrush, toothbrush, toothbrush. And just clean that off. And now you have a nice little clean joint. And the same stuff also applies to smaller pads like a flag controller. So strip back the wire to about the size of the pad itself. See, it's a tiny bit shorter than the pad. Turn up the wire. And also, also turn up the pad. Make sure to heat the pad and then melt the solder on the pad. That was too quick, I didn't heat the pad properly. Heat the pad. It's better. Okay. Then you can also, this just makes it a bit easier, use the Light flux from the flux pen. Hold your wire properly. And just give it some heat. Actually, the black one is a bit shit because I didn't hold the wire properly and I held it uh, like a bit up, so twist it up. But it's still on there properly and I don't know, good enough for me. Good 
and you really want to make sure that you actually melt all the solder properly. So you need to hold it there for a little bit. So don't just do like a light tap, so it just barely hangs on. So, so no, 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 none of this. I hope that it holds, but actually heat it properly. Wait a second and then hold it in place until it's fully cooled off again. So I didn't go into detail on soldering temperature because it kind of doesn't really matter. So here I did one of these on 300 degrees Celsius, one on 380 and one on 450. And you probably can't tell the difference because there is none. So it doesn't really matter. Just try a couple, see what you like. Just changes the timing a bit and also High temperatures make the flux evaporate a bit faster and also make your tip oxidize a bit faster so you have to clean it more often. But except for that it doesn't really matter. You can get good joints on any temperature really. So that wraps up the video and again I'm not a soldering expert. I just learned soldering for FPV drones and I'm sure there's someone who could do it better than me. But if you're just building your own drones and not selling them this is probably completely fine. So let me know if this helped you and send this video to your friend whose solar joints look like this.